Hey guys, before the video begins, I want to let you know that the Gaming Master guys, Ready Not It, and myself are currently doing a co-op Let's Play of Pokemon Rupee, Sapphire, and Emerald over on the Gaming Master guys channel, so be sure to check that out. There are currently three parts up as of this recording. There will be more parts out soon, so be sure to subscribe to the Gaming Master guys to keep up with that. It's been really, really fun. And yeah, also subscribe to the other members of the Gaming Master Guys and myself as well to keep up with all of our videos. And with that, let's get into these stories. Let's not meet stories. Number one. Story one. A customer. Okay, so for context, last year I signed up to work my local maid cafe for a big convention. I was so excited I landed a spot on their list. The maid cafe here is pretty exclusive and kind of runs the con business in the area despite there being another maid cafe. Around the time I got accepted, I had just started dating my current boyfriend a couple weeks before the con. We're long distance though and since we literally just started dating, he didn't have enough time to make it down here for the con. I was not shy about showing him off though, it was pretty well known I was taken before the con even began. When I got there I could tell the maid cafe was understaffed that year. See because of some background bullshit I probably shouldn't discuss, the maid cafe was practically forced to open a second cafe spot at the same convention. I think someone said they had double the new hires? Anyways, because we were understaffed, training for the new hires kinda got pushed under the rug. It was fine the first half of the day because we just walked around, advertised the cafe, etc, etc. But then they had to throw us into the cafe at some point. That's where I met my first customer. Off the bat, he looked very out of place. He was older. Older than my grandpa. He had a black shirt with a wolf howling at the moon. He was using a walker to get around. And he had a big vase filled with what looked like roses made out of sheets of plastic. Maybe cellophane? I don't know what it was. I'm not trying to judge anyone who fits this this description, he just didn't look like the type to go to anime conventions, let alone the maid cafe. He was sitting there making the roses, and one of the butlers in charge of the new hires told me to take care of him. Mind you, I had like the absolute bare bones in terms of training. I did the typical maid cafe thing. I took his order, got him some food and drink, did that little hand thing to charge up the food or whatever, and then I sat and started to talk, started to talk with him. He seemed nice at first. He gave me one of his roses despite me being visibly uncomfortable accepting it. I don't like receiving gifts from strangers due to past trauma at this point. I didn't even let my boyfriend buy me things. Also, he wouldn't let me talk. He kept saying random facts and would always say, I bet you didn't know that, not a lot of people know that. Mind you, I'm almost done with college, I am an educated woman and I feel pretty insulted. At the same time, I'm trying to get a word in because I want to keep up with the cafe standards and prove to my superiors that I can hold a conversation with strangers. I keep trying to talk but I'm constantly interrupted. Finally he says, hey do you know what third base is? I know what second base is, but I can't keep up with the kids in your lingo. Is third base intercourse? My mouth hits the floor. I guess he could tell that question made me uncomfortable because he gave me another rose. It very much felt like I was being bribed not to tell the other maids about that wildly inappropriate remark, but all it did was distract me with a different kind of unease. I stayed anyways because I, because I didn't want to be seen as a bad host or have him complain to my superiors. Then he started, he started to talk about women. Again, I wasn't allowed to get a word in because if I was, I would 1000% have told him I have a boyfriend. It feels like every time I tried to bring it up, politely and casually, he would change the subject, almost as if he knew. Anyways, he told me he was a loner, that women don't like him because he's an artist, and that he bangs beautiful women, women prettier than me. I'll bet money he was expecting me to be grateful he was giving me the time of day when he could be out banging a total 10, I roll. But they, but they never stayed because women inherently don't like commitment. Like I wish I could figure out what the hell he was talking about. Then before I could reply to his mad ravings, he told me to give him my hand. I was super confused and in a more demanding tone, he told me to, he told me to give him my hand. I tried to give him the hand with a ring my boyfriend gave me to help ward off creeps, a lot of good it was doing at that time, and the older man said, kinda angry, no, not that one. I reluctantly gave my other hand, god knows why I didn't just run away. 
I think I was scared I would be the one who gets in trouble for some reason. Anyways, he opens up my palm to him and starts tracing the creases in it. I think he's doing palmistry, something I dabble in, so I thought I finally had a chance to ease into a conversation. I asked him if he was doing palmistry, to which he got really offended and said, No! I'm reading your aura! I know people who read auras, and I've never seen them do it like this, but okay. This is probably the creepiest part. He tells me I'm vain and that I value looks, but I can look past it. Gee, thanks. That I value intelligent conversation and want someone knowledgeable in my life. That I want someone who appreciates art like me. That I want someone generous and kind who can protect me. The nail in the coffin was when he told me I was suited for an older guy. I wanted to cry because while he was describing my boyfriend to a T, I knew he was trying to tell me he was perfect for me and that I needed him in my life. It was like he was using it against me and I think he could tell and I think he could tell me and I think he could tell he once again made me uncomfortable because then he told me that I liked animals. He said, "I'll go take you to feed the ducks sometime." A sentence that still haunts me to this day. Then he wrote down his full name, three email addresses, and two phone numbers, and told me to keep in touch with him so he can take me to feed the ducks. I ended up giving the cafe all the information he gave me before ripping up the card on my bed and crying in the hotel later. Thankfully, another customer came in and I moved to sit between them. You could tell the older guy was angry the other guy was there. I tried to keep conversation with both of them, but the younger guy didn't talk much. He ate and left. Another maid started talking to the older guy, and I took the opportunity to escape, no, escort the younger man out. On the way out, one of the maids asked if I was okay. I guess the staff noticed I was uncomfortable. I did try to hide it. With a smile, I whispered I was not okay and that I was going to have a meltdown. She told me to go on my break, to which I did end up breaking down in the parking lot, but for that and other reasons I won't go into here. After a drink and treat from a nearby coffee shop, I resolved myself to go back inside. The rest of the weekend was wonderful. I got to talk about memes <laughs> with the table. Someone at my table drew a picture of me. I got my photo taken with a really sweet girl and her hilarious dad. I bounded with another... I bonded with another girl over long distance relationships, and at the end of it all, I made $20 in tips. The only other thing that I didn't like about that weekend was that the maid that ended up taking my spot next to the old creep tried to defend him to the other maids. The staff at the cafe immediately banned him once he left. Apparently he even cracked a joke about making me uncomfortable on his way out. But she was telling everyone how nice he was to her and trying to convince them he shouldn't be banned. This went on for like two days out of the four we worked together. She told me they talked about paranormal stuff and murder mysteries, the latter of which made my spine crawl. I like that stuff too, but not when a creepy guy almost as old as my grandpa tries to talk to me about it. She brought the guy up at group dinner and said she felt bad for him, that he was so sweet and shouldn't have been banned, bullshit like that. I was pretty angry she was standing up for him, but after crying and re relaying my story to the table, she didn't talk about him again. It was pretty clear what he did was indefensible. I gave her the roses he gave me and things seemed to be okay from there. But to the creepy old man I met at the maid cafe, fuck you and your ducks. Let's not meet. Story 2 My last customer at GameStop. This is my second post on this forum and hopefully it's my last. I work at GameStop. It's a great job and I'm surrounded by everything that I enjoy. Games, anime, etc. I am not saying this to be conceited, to be conceited. It, just makes this, it just makes more sense for the story. I am pretty. I have been told that I am very pretty. And I've even been told from my manager that that's why he hired me because a large percentage of our customers are male. This post is about one particular customer that I've encountered. I mainly work on the registers. This job consists of greeting people when they walk in and of course work on the register. It was getting close to closing time and I was the only one up front at this time. I was getting started with my closing duties when I heard the buzzer that goes off when the door opens. Without looking, I welcome the customer. Hi, welcome to GameStop. Let me know if there's anything I can help you find. Normally I get a hello where they respond with a question, but it was silent. I look up from behind the counter and I see the man that just entered the door looking at me, but once my eyes met his, he looked away and started looking at the games on the shelves. 
I shrug it off. It's normal for male customers to not greet me because they think because I'm female I don't have valid knowledge about games. And I continue with my closing duties. I'm bent behind the counter when I feel some someone standing on the other side. It's the man. He puts the games on the counter and says nothing. I grab his games from the drawers then I proceed with the normal questions we ask. Did you find everything alright? Do you have a phone number with us? Do you want us to protect this game for you? My questions get met with silence and all he does is stare. I turn my attention back to the register and while finishing up the transaction I can feel his eyes digging into the side of my head. I print out his receipt, put his games in a bag, and he takes and turns around to leave. I again shrug this interaction off because again it's not out of the ordinary for me. It's almost time for me to pull down the gates and lock up when I get a call. I groan because I think it's a customer trying to wiggle their way in before we close and I pick up the phone. Uh, hi, thank you for calling GameStop. This is my name here. How may I help you? I was just inside, purchasing some games. Oh, was something wrong with the purchase? No, I'm just calling to let you know that I've received your signals. At this point, I'm very confused because I treated him like any other customer. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, sir. He said this part a little more sternly. I'm calling to let you know I picked up on your signals. Also, I know I should have hung up, but I was curious what he was refer referring to. You are very beautiful, and your signals were received. When do you get off? I'll be waiting. At this point in the conversation, I hung up, and I rushed forward and closed the gates and locked up the store. I went into the back and told my manager about the phone call, and he said after I finished closing up, he would take me home because my apartment complex is very close, so I walk. As I was quickly replacing the trash bags, I saw a car pull up right in front of the store and park. No one got out. Luckily, my manager parked out back and we left out the back door. I never saw the guy again, but every time I walk home, I think about that one particular customer. Story 3 customer can't take a hint. So I've been working at Wendy's, a popular fast food chain in the US, for a few months now, and while I've had the occasional offhand comment, i.e., wow, you're so beautiful, do you have a boyfriend? He must be a lucky guy. When are you off? I'd love to take you out. I've never had something like this happen before. So there I was, an hour before my shift was over. I work as a cashier and the majority of people who come in are old people and construction workers. I have my back turned to the dining room and I'm putting liners on trays when I hear someone loudly clear their throat. I turn around and apologize and tell them I'm ready to take their order whenever they are ready. The customer is a heavier set man in his 50s or 60s whose shirt appears to be covered in either grease stains or sweat. I also noticed the smell of cigarettes was strongly wafting off him, but that kind of thing never really bothered me. Then the conversation goes like this. Hello, my name. How was your day going? It's going well, ready to be finished with the work day. Oh, what time are you off? I'm a bit uncomfortable with answering that. Can I get you something? It's just an innocent question. I'm not a creep. Although you are very naturally beautiful, I'm sure you get a lot of weirdos in here. It's refreshing to see a girl your age not wearing any makeup. Are you Spanish? I can tell because of your name. I have a very common Spanish last name and I am, but I look like a white girl with dark hair. Y y yes I'm half Mexican. On your mom or dad's side? At this point my shift manager comes over because she can see I'm clearly uncomfortable and there's a line of a few people now behind him. When he sees her walk over he says, oh. You're in trouble. She hears this and asks him if everything's okay and he says, Sure, just making conversation. Is that against the rules or something? And she responds, No sir, but you're holding up the line and haven't ordered anything. He makes a face like he's annoyed and orders a small iced tea, pays in change and the whole time he's just staring intently, intensely at me. It makes me so uncomfortable I start to get red in the face. I continue taking orders while he just sits there staring. 
Eventually, I tell my manager he's making me uncomfortable and ask if I can go wash trays in the back or do drive through for the rest of my shift. She says no and reminds me I have to clean the dining room before I leave. I start to walk away and she says he's probably just a lonely old man and it's not against the law to stare. This makes me really anxious and annoyed but I need this job so I can so I just go grab a rag and start cleaning tables. I try to keep my distance from the man who's sitting in the air right corner when he says excuse me little miss my table isn't clean. Trying to use my best customer service voice I say you're welcome to switch to a clean one and I'll wipe that one off. He insists he does have to move and even has the balls to say should I just go get the manager? Wait, did I read that right? He insists he doesn't have to move and even has the balls to say, Should I just go get the manager? If you've ever worked in retail or food service, you know that's the last thing you want to happen, especially if your manager is a grade A bitch. So he lifts up his tray and sneers at me while I wipe it from the opposite side and try to stay as far away as possible. He also asks me to grab him a straw, which is not at all my job, but of course I do it anyway. When I come back and set it on his table, he says something that makes my stomach drop. What's no man like me have to do to get you to say yes to a date? I know this isn't just an anxiety thing, but when I start to have a panic attack, I literally can't talk. I get red and hot all over, especially my face, and I shake bad. I could feel it coming, so I just walked away. I went in and told my shift manager that he was being really pushy and I can't go back out there. She told me I can just leave early. I think she could tell I was near tears, but I had only 20 minutes of my shift and the person taking over was there early. I'm 19 and the whole reason I got this job was to save up for a car. My house is a little less than a mile away and I don't usually mind walking, but today for obvious reasons I didn't feel comfortable doing that. I tried calling my boyfriend for a ride because I knew he was off that day, but he was at lunch with his younger sister and so I downplayed the situation to avoid making him leave like my needy self. I walk on and surprise surprise the man is still there. As soon as I walk out he walks out too. I decide to completely ignore him and begin making my way to the crosswalk next to my work, headphones in. It isn't until he blocks my way that I see he's still trying to talk to me. Need a ride sweetheart? It's awfully hot out here. He says this with a wink that makes my skin crawl. I walk around him and ignore him, pushing the button to cross. He makes this face of horror like he can't believe I refused his offer after clearly showing I'm uninterested. I put my headphones in and blast the volume but I can see his mouth moving like he's cursing me out and he, tur and he turns around and gets back in his car. I keep pushing the button as if that will somehow make the walk sign appear faster, desperate to get home and lock the door behind me. When it does, I start to walk without even realizing his car was at the crosswalk and he quickly speeds up, narrowly missing me and the shock made me fall back on my ass. He speeds off and I ran across and hid on the small bike trail for 15 minutes before running home and locking the door behind me. I just called the actual manager, different from the shift manager, basically the big boss, and she was much more understanding. She told me that I'm allowed to have someone take my place if he comes in again and also let all my co-workers know not to give him any info about my shifts. TLDR, old man comes into my work asking, asking way too many personal questions, waits until my shift is over, follows me outside and almost hits me with his car when I reject his advances and flat out ignore him. Story 4 Every Barista's Worst Nightmare this happened literally last week at my new job that I've only been at for a week as a barista at a regional coffee chain. I was working a 6 hour shift, 8 o'clock to 14 o'clock, when around 10 o'clock a customer came in and ordered our smallest coffee, sat down at a table that gave him full view behind the counter and into our back kitchen and employee space. Originally this customer seemed nice, I even forgot he was there as we were quite busy. However, however, as soon as there was a shift change at 12 and my manager left to run some errands and would be back later and another employee started with me, the customer no longer became as nice and became nice and polite. Immediately he came up to me for a refill on his coffee and specifically tipped me a large amount and said it was because of how cute and sweet I was. 
As I continued to work, he continued to try and talk to me non-stop, giving me very graphic information about his life, including how his elementary school was one of the last few in the area to, to disintegrate while making not too friendly eye contact at my black co-worker. I would just continue to ignore him and say, uh-huh, and oh wow, just to continue giving customer service that would not get me in trouble. I made myself a lunch though and went off into the back kitchen out of sight of the customers to eat it. The customer then comes up to my coworker and tells my coworker to have me specifically make him whatever it is he was watching me eat in the back kitchen. So I went out and rang him up and the entire time he was asking me about my personal life and made me feel very uncomfortable. After I made the customer his food and he went back to sit down, my manager came back from his errands and pulled me and my coworker into the back kitchen. He informed us that two other female employees had spoken with him earlier in the week about that exact customer making them feel uncomfortable and my manager asked my coworker to make sure I got to my car safely at the end of my shift. I told my manager about how the customer had already made me feel uncomfortable by specifically tipping me, tipping just me a large amount and requesting for me to make his sandwich. My manager then finished up his things and left for good. As soon as my manager left again, the customer got worse. He then continued to tell me how I reminded him of a girl he was chasing the other night at the bar. When I told him that it was, that for sure was not me, he said, oh, oh, I wish it was. And from there, I tried to keep my distance and talk to my coworker. Out of the blue, he then informed me and my coworker of a hot little 13 year old that he had tried to get with recently. We were freaked out when he said that and tried to ignore him to the best of our abilities. Later my coworker asked how old I asked how old I was as I looked very young for my age, so I told him I was twenty two. I thought I was speaking quietly enough that the customer didn't hear me say my age, but I was wrong because the customer then immediately said, Wow, you're fucking sexy for a twenty two year old which thanks, I guess? Luckily, by this time I had only a few minutes left in my shift, so I was trying to hurry up my last few things to get out of there on time and away from this man. He sees me cashing out my tips and goes, Oh, is that your blue Pontiac out there in the parking lot? And I said no, and he continuously tried to guess which car was mine, and then eventually asked me what I drove. I lied about what car I drive, because that was sending out a lot of red flags. As I finally cashed out my tips and grabbed my purse to go, to go, the customer then stood up and said, well I guess it's time for me to leave. I waited until he left before me and had my coworker walk me to the car. I texted my manager and told him what happened. My manager, thank goodness for him, said he would talk to the customer next time he saw him and would let the other managers know to be on the lookout for him. So random creepy customer at my new job, I hope my manager spoke to you and let's not meet again. Story 5 Belligerent Customer So to set this up, I work for a national retailer. We have recently gone through a restructuring with one of the more significant changes being the downsizing of store security across the smaller stores. My store is smaller but it is located in a large city and in a very downtown area. We are currently running on little security and at the time of the story, we had no security which led to all sorts of issues. So as part of us dealing without security, the managers have to man the entrances and do our best to de-escalate incidents. I am merchandising some handbags when a very strange woman enters the store. She initially sets off our sensor towers and quickly runs out, but returns about 10 minutes later after realizing that we had noticed but didn't respond to the alarm. This woman was very red, sweaty, and seemed to be under the influence of something as evidenced by her erratic behavior and her habit of talking to herself. Her behavior is the standard for any downtown store, as was evidenced by her rummaging through bracelets and other accessories with her hand shaking. She seemed like a sort of run-of-the-mill tweaker, <laughs> something pretty much all retail employees have dealt with at some time or another. Usually when we have shoplifters like, shoplifters like this, the standard in our company is to provide over-the-top service and act very congenial in the hopes of deterring a shoplifter by making them feel visible but without being a distraction to other customers. This woman slowly begins to tweak her way 
toward the exit with a ton of merchandise that is poorly concealed. It was almost like she physically could not hide her shoplifting because she was so under the influence that it was making it difficult to control her arms and legs. Another manager and I hatch a plan to service her over to the counter in order to obtain some of the merchandise she is looking at and to sort of call her bluff and make her either pay or put the items on hold. After a small altercation with her and the other manager, she begins to cuss and starts storing the, her merchandise into small piles in full view of other customers. She was frantically moving personal items in and out of a pair of black leather bags she had not yet paid for, and after doing this for a few minutes, my fellow manager decided to help her begin moving the items to the counter. I immediately began scanning these items in order to be fair and treat the situation like she were any other customer. I'm commenting on how fashionable the items she chose are, asking her where she planned to wear the items, etc. She became more frantic as items were rang and as we finished begins looking for her payment. I've seen customer fake forgetting their credit card many a time, but when I tell you she was honestly frantic, I mean it. She began to get even redder and banged her hands on the counter contesting that either she lost her wallet or that we had it somewhere. In order to de-escalate the situation, I emptied out the plastic bags, purses, even checking empty shoe boxes she had taken shoes from, but I wasn't producing anything. My fellow manager begins to search for the wallet as well. This not being enough, she suddenly starts to run around the store while being trailed by my fellow manager, leading to an outburst as she returns to the counter and lunges across, hand in the air, nearly scratching me as she yells about a wallet and, and all her other stuff. At this time I have stepped back and my coworker and I can see on each other's faces that calling the police is the only option. I begin to do so as she has a tantrum and runs out of the store with a few pieces of merchandise and supposedly without her wallet. We don't see her again and write the necessary reports in order to forward them to our store owner. Now that the drama has subsided I start to place items out on the floor that she didn't successfully steal. My fellow manager and I are chatting at the counter as I, as I lift up one of the black leather handbags she was toying with and out falls a box cutter. Not a simple industrial box cutter, but one where the blade has been halfway pulled out and sharpened further to create a shiv. My fellow manager caught out sick the next day. Belligerent customer, let's not meet.